Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. with faith in Jesus Christ. We receive the body of our sister Marcia for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Marcia. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Amen. We sing the hymn number six, Now That the Daylight Fills the Sky.
be seated. This tribute to Sister Marcia has been prepared by Sister Faye Cook, nurse, and her sister, Exenia Watson. Marcia Watson was born on January the 10th, 1938, to Frederick and Anita Watson, who resided in King Edward Road, Bank Hall Cross Road, Bank Hall St. Michael. Marcia attended St. Giles Primary School and Lynch's Secondary School with her younger sister, Exenia. The two sisters spent many of their younger years with first cousins, Yvette, Sonia, Ewan and Erwin Watson, and the late Rudolph Watson, Edward Callender, and the late Nita Callender, and their grandparents, Fitzwilliam and Ella Watson, Alonzo and Alberta Knight, an aunt and uncle, Vita and Vernon Burke. Life in Bank Hall was mainly uneventful during Marcy's childhood and teen years. The days were a gentle rhythm of school, Sunday school at the cathedral, annual events such as excursions and exhibition, and weekly leisurely walks through Bridgetown with friends, Arundel, Lord, and Odessa Paris. Marcia could recall Bridgetown tales, such as that of a sunken merchant ship whose cargo floated ashore, much to the, the delight of passers-by during the Second World War. Although this would have occurred during Marcia's childhood, it was the talk of many years afterwards, as life was not as eventful as it is today. As a girl, Marcia rode a bicycle from Bank Hall, her Bank Hall home, to school, her grandparents' house in My Lord's Hill, and to neighboring venues. Travel was mainly on her bicycle or on foot. She also barred her sister Xenia to school at St. Giles Primary in My Lord's Hill. On completing secondary school, Marcia entered the teaching service following in the father's, her father's footsteps. While her father mainly taught at the secondary level, Marcia's preference was primary education. So it's off to Erdiston Teachers College for Marcia to complete her teacher's certificate in 1967 following two years of study and boarding at the college, as was the custom in those days. Erdiston Teachers College not only provided training for Marcia, but blessed her with lifelong friendships in several, with several friends, including Marlene Thompson and the late Pauline Bayer. Marcia attended the 7.45 a.m and later the nine o'clock services here at the cathedral, all of her adult, adult life, why she was able to do so. Her affiliation with the cathedral as a Sunday school child from age of six came about, came about thanks to her, her aunt Elise Callender, mother of Edward and Nita Callender, who brought her to church. This was before her aunt Elise and her family's migration to New York. Edward, who continues to reside in New York, was one of Marcy's weekly callers until she passed away. Cousins Yvette, Sonia, Ewan also migrated to Canada. But over the years, they, along with brother Irwin here in Barbados, remained in contact with Marcia and visited her, visited each other in Canada and Barbados. As a young adult, Marcia served as a Sunday school teacher 
in the cathedral's Sunday school department. Marcy's teaching career began at Turner's Hall Primary in St. Andrew and saw her move into St. Stephen's Primary, followed by her appointment as senior teacher at Paynes Bay Infants on January the 1st, 1975. From 1978 to 1979, Marcia was afforded the opportunity to pursue an advanced diploma in education, educational studies, infant and nursery education at the Cambridge Institute of Education in the United Kingdom. Two years later, she returned to Barbados. Marcia was appointed as the head teacher of Eden Lodge Nursery, serving there from 1981 to 1998. After her retirement from government, she worked four years as the head teacher of the River Road New Testament Church's Nursery School. Caring was a way of life for Marcia as a teacher, a sister, aunt, and friend. When Marcia fully retired, she used the time to travel, indulge her love of flowers as a member of the Flower Circle Floral Arranging Club, and her love for baking, especially the great cake, and assisting the church with its Saturday flea markets, arriving as early as 6.30 in the morning to arrange clothing for the day's sale. Marcia did not have children of her own, but as the aunt of Faye Cook Nurse, she was a third parent and often joked that Faye was like a daughter and Jared and Nadia were like her grandchildren. Marcia, along with her children's granny, Exenia, were a daily part of the children's young lives before they ventured on to pre preschool and primary school. Their care and involvement continued as the children grew, which gave their parents peace of mind as they worked, knowing that the children were well looked after. Christmas and Easter were celebrations spent together each year. Marcia, Exenia, Jared, Nadia, Faye, and husband Orlando. Other family traditions included gathering on Bay Street to watch the annual Independence Parade and attending the children's school events. The year 2018, brought a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease to Marcia. As Marcia's condition progressed, she depended on her niece as a younger family member to arrange for her care and manage her affairs. She was thankful for the care of her physician, Dr. Irving Branker. During her early years as a teacher, Marcy had met another teacher, Judith Gamble, a faithful friend who, along with her caregivers, Rachel Walks and Sharon Snag, through Infinity Nursing Services, cared for Marcia as she passed away at home. Through her sickness, Marcy was able to remain in the comfort of her home. It was there that she passed away peacefully on October 15th, 2022. Rest in peace, Marcia.
And I invite Mrs. Dion Corbin to present another tribute. Good morning. I've been asked to read a tribute from London, from Esther Holmes, Debbie and Gary Greer, Dalton Downs, Yvonne Bovell, John Lord, The Gazette Family, Jennifer Stock. The very sad news of the death of our dear friend Marcia has allowed us to reflect on our 70 years of friendship. We recall our school days in Barbados in the 1950s. Our daily travels from Bank Hall to Bridgetown by bus, bike, and yes, sometimes just walking and reflecting on the day school day's activity. Such innocent fun, so much laughter. Then, very much later in England, we recall Marcia's very many visits to London, particularly Bromley, Kent, for over 50 years. We believed that London was Marcia's second hometown. We all enjoyed so very many family lunches, celebrations, outings and reunions, and special church services in some of England's most well-known cathedrals and chapels. Marcia's knowledge of Anglican church history was better than any of ours. On the group tours, she was often asked for further information on a specific topic. Then, back in Barbados in Marcia's home at Warner's Park Christ Church, Marcia always graciously returned our hospitality, hosting friends from England, young and old, as Debbie and Gary Greer and young friends like Jennifer Stock recall. She always ensured that our Barbados holidays were given her full attention and priority. Once again, so much fun and so much enjoyment. And now their Zini, their Faye, and all family and friends in Barbados. Let us all give God thanks for Marcia's life. We know that those we have loved will always be in our hearts and in our thoughts. Goodbye, dear Marcia. Bless be the tie that binds. Please stand. Let us this day give God thanks for the gift of life, for the life of our sister Marcia, her contribution to home and society, her career in teaching, her friendship through the years, for her participation in the life of the church, and her promotion and spread of the gospel through her own witness. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Marcia, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Can you be seated for the first Bible reading?
Good morning. The first lesson is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Here ends the lesson. Psalm number 43. Victor. Psalm number 43 can be found on page 4 in your order of service. We read alternate verses. Give sentence with me, O God, and defend my cause against the people, the ungodly people. O deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. O send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me, and bring me unto thy holy hill, and to thy dwelling. Why art thou so heavy, O my soul? And why art thou so disquieted within me? In glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. 
so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. Stand to sing the hymn number 317, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Words from John chapter 14, part of verse 9. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Physical resemblance is one aspect of identity, but beyond the physical appearance, one is also able to be identified according to certain gestures, and uh, each of us has a distinctive personality, and uh, that in itself might commend us to others. 
At the heart of such is usually a relationship between the two in which they're able to communicate beyond the physical sense. It is evident of the relationship that exists between the persons and our knowledge of individuals which serve to inform one's assessment of the other. Interestingly, in response to Philip's request, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied by saying to him, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. He most likely was not referring to physical appearance because at the heart of the biblical faith is that God cannot be represented in any physical image. Moreover, humans are creatures of God, made in the divine image, and as such, they cannot be seen as God. It must have been a question of relationship which Jesus referred to, much like Moses who saw the goodness of God and not his face. The Father is now fully revealed in the Son, Jesus. By the Son's love for humanity, people have been able to experience who God is like. God is love. The Gospel of John in, in an earlier section, in the fact, in the very first chapter, states, and I quote, the Word became flesh and lives among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth, end of quote. Here there is reference to the close relationship between God and the Son. In a sense, God is the one who is ultimately the source of all love. Because of the relationship between the two, father and son, those who encounter the son in the villages and cities came to experience the love of God. They did so as Jesus healed some, as Jesus provided comfort to others, as Jesus provided physical sustenance for them, and altogether as Jesus helped people to renew their personal lives and enter into new relationships as so clearly demonstrated in the parable of the prodigal son. A similar experience is available to all who in their lifetime acknowledge God as the source of their life and all who respond to the presence of the divine life given to us by faith. All of us who participate in the life of the church and seek to build neighborly relationships to the practice of love to sharing and caring for each other can experience a sense of who God is and claim that gift of God's love in this broken world. In faith, we respond by active participation, first of all, in the worship of God in the church. We do so with other believers as we gather in person, as we share fellowship in the comfort of homes, or even now more recently, as we share services online. People of faith respond to God's love by acknowledging God's presence 
through our worship. In this activity, the believers appreciate their own worth before God and acknowledge that it is in God in whom we live, move, and have our being. The believer is dependent upon God for guidance and is thankful for the sustenance which has been received from the goodness of God through the years. In addition to our participation in the life of worship in general, the Christian Church offers further participation through the sacraments, in particular the sacrament of Holy Communion. This is central to this relationship between the believer and God. It is the physical expression of mutual love and self-giving between Christ and his church. The believer meets with others in worship. The believer meets with other people around the altar to feast upon God's holy food and to find the strength to cope day by day to further active service in the community. After active involvement in the life of the worshiping congregation, has ended. After such participation has been limited by age or illness, Members are then also able to participate in the, the Eucharistic family as communion is shared in the context of their home. In a sense, distance, age, or other physical limitation really cannot limit the presence of God's love and uh, the participation of the faithful people in knowing that they remain members of the household of God. Our sister lived an active life and participated fully in the life of the cathedral church and over time was able to receive the ministrations in the context of our home, of her home. As we commend her to God's eternal presence and commit her body to the earth, we thank God for her faith in response to the Father's love. Let us be comforted by her faith, her love, her friendliness, and her service. In our generation, let us too seek to respond to the Father's love so that we can also claim a relationship with God. It could be in one's service to others that the Father, Father's love is demonstrated. It could be in the service of others that the Father is glorified. On behalf of the cathedral's congregation, and especially on behalf of the pastoral team, clergy and laity, I offer to her sister, niece, other relatives and friends Sincere condolences and pray that you will be comforted by the experience of this funeral service and that you will be further comforted and inspired by the faith and the life she lived. May you find strength and comfort in God who is revealed in Jesus, the Son. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Amen.
Please stand. Let us with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were baptized as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed on page 6. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontus Pilate. He suffered remain standing for the prayers, the response to each petition is hear us, Lord. For our sister Marcia, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Marcia and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life. Raise our sister to eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship before your saints. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Marcia, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. We sing the hymn number 697. There's a land of pure delight. During the singing of this hymn, the uh, collection is invited towards the organ refurbishment fund. There are collection boxes in the aisles, and we ask you to make use of those. The hymn number 697.
eternal habitations where is the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign one God forever and ever Amen into your hands O merciful Savior we commend your servant Marcia acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold a lamb of your own flock a sinner of your own redeeming Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord. Let light perpetual shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We sing the hymn number 349, There Was Joy in Heaven.
Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. In the paradise may the angels receive you, and at your coming may the martyrs receive you or bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promise of all to save sins of all that hate them. our father Abraham